A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whom he had taken by his right hand to subdue nations before him and strip the loins of kings to force gateways before him that their gates be closed no more. It is for the sake of my servant Jacob of Israel, my chosen one, that I have called you by your name, conferring a title, though you do not know me. I am the Lord unrivaled. There is no other God besides me. Though you do not know me, I arm you, that men may know from the rising to the setting of the sun that apart from me all is nothing. The Word of the Lord. Give the Lord glory and power. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Give the Lord glory and power. The Lord is great and worthy of praise to be feared above all gods. The gods of the heathens are naught. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and power. Worship the Lord in his temple, O earth, tremble before him. Proclaim to the nations God is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, wishing you grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We always mention you in our prayers and we thank God for you all and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, worked for love and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers and sisters, that love comes to you and that you have been chosen because when we brought the good news to you, he came to you not only as words, but as power and, and as the Holy Spirit, as utter conviction. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went away to work out between them how to trap Jesus in what he said, and they sent their disciples to him together with the Herodians to say, Master, we know that you're an honest man, and you teach the way of God in an honest way, and that you are not afraid of anyone because a man's rank means nothing to you. Tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice, and he replied, You hypocrites, why do you set this trap for me? Let me see the money you pay the tax with. They handed him a denarius, and he said, Whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's, they replied. He then said to them, very well, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Some time ago I read about this vicar who spent a short spell in prison because he refused to pay the council tax. 
He reckoned that the rises in this tax have been so numerous that it constituted an unjust burden for a very large segment of the population. However, I think it would be unfair to cast Caesar, that is, the state, in the mould of being forever anti-God, as if the two were permanently at loggerheads. After all, there have been many saintly kings and queens throughout history, not least in this country. Having said that, the relationship between the church and the state throughout history has been mostly fractious. I believe that the upheavals of the 16th century Re Reformation, for instance, were as much to do with monarchs and other ruling classes in power struggles with the Catholic Church as it was to do with religious questions per se. At that time, the monasteries were indeed powerful, owning huge tracts of land in the country. But the break with Rome put an end to all of that. It led to the dissolution of the monasteries, at least 900 of them, and all the monks and the nuns, for that matter, were turfed out of their monasteries. Having said that, there was a great outcry among ordinary people against their closure. Sometimes the relationship between church and state has been openly hostile, as in the last century when communism tried, but it failed, to silence the church and stamp out its influence in public life. Closer to our own day, I notice where that powerful group, the United Nations, where the planned parenthood group within that United Nations are not at all happy with the Catholic Church's criticism of their population control programs, which it regards as morally objectionable. Unfortunately, Western state aid for these poorer nations is often withheld if they don't comply. The church in Africa, for instance, which is very much pro-family, is encouraging its people not to be swayed by these tempting UN offers of money for population control. A actually, Africa is very much underpopulated. Some say you should never mix religion and politics, but I notice at present there's a big furor going on in the United States because a notable Catholic woman judge who is anti-abortion has been nominated to the Supreme Court. Surely our faith should inform the stance we take on certain social and moral issues affecting us and the next generation. We need to be careful that we don't render to Caesar what belongs to God. A good example of that is the redefinition of marriage some years ago by most governments in Europe is a case in point. It shows disregard for God's will, which is inscribed in our very human nature. The laws of God and the laws of Caesar often clash. Our Cardinal in London said recently that the gospel we preach is very often counter-cultural. We, however, uphold the Church's proud tradition, especially when we render to God what is rightfully His in all areas of public and private life. Perhaps the harsh reality of the coronavirus pandemic offers us all an opportunity in the relative security of our homes to reflect more deeply on areas in our present day culture where our allegiance to God takes second place to that of Caesar. But are we prepared to do anything about it? 
a state or country is only as Christian as the individuals within it. If we do our bit in keeping Caesar from encroaching on God's domain, then we're headed in the right direction. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all. And I'm sorry we don't have the full Mass today because I set it up wrongly, but I know how to work it now. And so from next week, you will have the full Mass again. I thought I'd just give you the readings today and the little homily, which I've just given. But next week, we'll be back to normal. God bless.